For the past week during my Lord's separating, I've gone Isaiah 43.19 at two different times. Behold, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I'll make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. In all my songs this week, the Lord has been building me up in great faith to believe in so much. It's quite amazing. And he seems so intentional and adamant about this. Everywhere I turn, he keeps reminding me to have great faith and great expectation for what he's about to do. Then this morning, the first song he played was from Pastor Brian Houston from Hillsong Church. And the title of his sermon was, Behold, New Roads. He's played this sermon before to encourage me, but with all his excitement about what's in store ahead, made me really grasp that he's about to leave me, leave his brides, truly in awe of him. I've been concerned with so many things, but declaring my trust in him and holding on to his faithfulness. And I believe this message will encourage you. As the Lord has made it clear, this is a now word, not just for me, but for you. This is a prophetic word he wants all his brides to hear. Behold, new roads he's preparing for each of you. Enjoy this fresh word. Welcome to this inspirational teaching by Pastor Brian Houston. I love the word behold. You know, it actually means, wow. Behold means stand in awe and be amazed. The Bible is filled with great behold moments. Times to stand in awe and be amazed. To be honest, our Hillsong story is a behold story. I can only stand in awe and be amazed. Isaiah 43 verses 15 to 20. It says, I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. Thus says the Lord who makes a way in the sea and a path through the mighty waters, who brings forth the chariot and horse, the army and the power. They shall lie down together, they shall not rise. They are extinguished, they are quenched like a wick. Talking about Pharaoh's armies. Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, wow, stand in awe and be amazed. I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth, you shall not know it. I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Behold, a new thing. A road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I start each year. Bobby and I start January. For years, we've gone to Noosa in Queensland on the Sunshine Coast. And one of my great friends in life is a pastor, a traveling minister who's very prophetic called Steve Penny. Steve and I always have one morning when I'm on holiday, we have like a three or four hour breakfast and we just talk about life, about what God's put in our heart. He's prophetic. And I find Steve's one of these guys, he says that much. And I take away from it this much. And so I love the way he speaks, not only into my life, but really he speaks for me into the life of our church. He began to speak to me about behold moments. He began to speak to me specifically about our church, about rivers in the wilderness uh, and roads in the desert. I got inspired as I began to think about it and ponder it and meditate on the thought You see, the Bible is filled with stand in awe and be amazed moments. Wow moments. I find wowing has different levels. I mean, sometimes it's like, wow, that's different. That's odd. Other times it's, wow, that's fantastic. And then you have, wow, I am overwhelmed. I am overawed at the goodness and faithfulness of God. I have to be honest, I so often when it comes to God's goodness and faithfulness, it's wow, I'm overawed. I look at what's happening in our church around the world, so many great things in so many cities and so much uh, on the horizon, so much ahead of us. To me, it's like behold, stand in awe and be amazed. Well, in these scriptures, in Isaiah 43, here's five declarations amazing declarations that God made. 
And I want you to apply it to your life as I speak it into our church. The first is God saying, I've got this. I can do it. It's Isaiah 43 verse 15. He says, I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. What's He saying? I'm Lord, I'm Holy, I'm Creator, I'm King. I've got this. What's going on in your world? What are you believing for in 2016? I've got this. I can do it. You can trust me. I'm God. Second amazing declaration is I've done it before. He begins to speak about not only Pharaoh's armies who he drew into the ocean, but he begins to speak about God's people And he says, verse 16, thus says the Lord who makes a way in the sea and a path through the mighty waters. I've done it before. (laughs) Well, it's true. God has done it before. He literally talks about the old new thing, which was bringing people to freedom out of Egyptian captivity. He begins to speak about the miracle of that. And he begins to remind us by saying that he makes a way in the sea and a path through the mighty wood of rivers that he has done it before. He changed Pharaoh's heart. He gave a road to freedom and a river to fullness in Jesus' name. The third thing is, I'm going to do it again. Listen, friends, I'm going to do it again. I will do another new thing. Hillsong Church, I will do it again. (laughs) I will do another new thing. I got faith in my spirit for this. I'm excited about it because it says, verse 18, do not remember the old things. Don't remember former things. Behold, I will do a new thing. Stand in awe and be amazed. Now it shall spring forth. He's saying, I'm gonna do another new thing. But I love the thought that he says, do not remember the former things. I think when God has so much behind you, so many miracles, so many unusual miracles, so many opportunities to pioneer again, the chance for us literally to be able to say, He has crowned our years with His goodness. But I'll tell you right now that sentiment erodes significance. If I was to try to explain what I mean by that, significance is in what's ahead of us, not what's behind us. My daughter Willow, she was at my house and we've got one of those bougainvillea vines that I love about Australian springs and summers. It's like this full red color. But Willow was so concerned. She said, Papa, Pops, why why are the flowers on the ground? She was so concerned for the flowers on the ground. But the truth is those flowers, their significance is over. They had their moment. They had their time to blossom. But that time is gone. The significance is what's ahead on the tree. And it's true in life. If you're the kind of person who looks back, even when it comes to our church, you look at past things. I've even heard people say, right where I'm standing here, there's another smaller building next door. We call it the hub, but it's where our church used to be. I've even heard people say, I remember how amazing it was back then. Well, you know our church then, just at Hills, wasn't even a third, maybe just a third of the size it actually is now. The significance is in what's ahead of you, friend. It's not as what is in behind you. The Lord says, behold, stand in awe and be amazed. I'm going to do a new thing in Jesus' name. So that's not hard for me to take a hold of because I once heard someone say the best (laughs) is yet to come. Praise God. He's going to do another new thing. So he's talking here about 700 years since that old thing, the Egyptian captivity coming to an end, God taking people to freedom. And he begins to show them another new thing. This time he's speaking about Babylonian captivity and releasing people from Babylon so that they could return to Jerusalem, so that they could rebuild the temple, so that they could restore the land. God was saying, I'm going to do a new thing. It's very, very exciting. The next thing he said is, hey, here's a clue. It's a pretty good clue. 19, verse 19, he goes on and says, I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. God is going to give us something new to behold. A road in the wilderness, rivers in the desert. My word for 2016 is behold, stand in awe 
and be amazed. God's gonna give a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I'll go on and explain what that means. But the fifth declaration is, shall ye not know it? It's God's challenge. Can you see it? Do you believe it? Do you expect it? Can you lay hold of it? Shall you not know it? God speaks into your future, into my future, just like He spoke into Israel and Judah's future. Behold, stand in awe and be amazed. I will do a new thing. Praise God for that. So if we just took a moment just to reflect, we're not going to live there, but if we just reflect on Egypt, it gives you a picture of what God was able to do because in Exodus 13 and 14, it paints a picture They had fled. God had changed Pharaoh's mind supernaturally and they had fled towards the Red Sea. And the scripture literally used the words, they were cornered in the wilderness. They had reached a point, they were cornered. And at that point, God brought them back a little and where he brought them to, ahead of them was Etham. Etham literally is where the mountains meet the sea. It was impossible, there is no way through. Behind them was a place called Migdol. It's in Exodus 14. Migdol was like a military post behind them. It was a sentry point, and from that point, you could look back at Egypt. So they could see their past. They could see where they'd come from, but they could also see Pharaoh's invading armies. And so they knew there was no way back. There was no way through. There was no way back. And the other place mentioned is Baal. Zephon, literally, the god of storm and tempest, was an island out in the Red Sea. They could see that ahead of them. There was no way forward. There was no way back. There was no way through. They were cornered. I think sometimes life feels like that. Another interesting thing is when God told Moses to lift up his rod, the truth is that the other side was 18 miles away from sea level. The horizon's only 14 miles away. In other words, when they stepped out, they couldn't even see where they were going. How often is like that? Got life like that? Serving God is faith like that. When you step out, you have no idea. When Bobby and I came to Australia, I came here as a maybe 20-year-old. I was in meetings down in Parramatta, which is a few kilometers from where I'm standing. Do you think I could see what was going to happen just up the road? What God would start in and through my life? I stepped out coming to Australia along with Bobby. We had no clue of what was ahead of us. So what's just beyond the horizon for you and I, I wonder, right now? New roads and new rivers. I want you to think about that. I want you to think about roads that lead upward to heaven's purpose and rivers that flow downwards with heaven's provision. Roads of faith always lead to rivers of blessing. And so Rhodes, Proverbs 15, verse 24, talks about the way of life winding upwards for the wise. That thought of a road winding upwards and often through a mountain pass when the road is winding upwards, it follows a river. You often get roads following rivers. You wind up the the mountain pass, but the river maybe deep down below you is flowing downwards. When it comes to heaven, I'm believing for roads in the desert where we step out in faith and I'm believing for rivers in the wilderness where there's roads, there's rivers and I'm believing not only for roads that take us upwards towards God's purpose but rivers that flow down with that with God's purpose bring God's provision. Now as a church we're going to see that. I'm about to tell you some exciting new behold things and I mean rarely. I am overawed. I am overawed. Stand still and be amazed. New roads wind upwards. New rivers flow downwards. When I think about rivers, the Bible says so much about rivers, more than I have a chance to talk to you about right now. But it does talk in the New Testament about rivers of living water. Rivers have life. Ezekiel, he spoke specifically from a vision God gave him about the temple. And he talked about Rivers, Ezekiel 47, he talks specifically about rivers that flow out from the temple and would touch the stagnant waters. He spoke about fish and life and fishermen. 
He began to see that everything the river touched literally came to life. And then he says that that river flowed down to the stagnant waters, the Dead Sea, which is the most depressed place on earth. Jerusalem, well above sea level, but the most depressed spot on earth. In other words, the lowest point on earth is the Dead Sea. It's got such a high mineral content that it, Bobby and I went to Jordan and we actually swam in the Dead Sea. I'm not sure I'd do it again. You gotta make sure that every hole that you have is plugged up. If you don't have your eyes covered, you are gonna get sore eyes. If you don't have your nostrils somehow covered, you are gonna get it in your nostrils. And I'm telling you, it's, it burns, it burns. And then people roll in the mud right next to it because it's apparently got healing capacities. Well, I'm looking for better places than mud for healing capacities this morning. But I'll tell you right now, that I love the thought of what flows out of God's house, touching dead things and bringing them to life. 2016, let's believe for rivers that flow out of God's house all around the world and whatever they touch, when they touch sin, when they touch sickness, when they touch disease, when they touch poverty, they bring life in Jesus' name. And of course, Micah 4 paints a different picture. Micah 4 literally paints a picture of a river of people flowing into the temple. What an awesome, awesome dichotomy that is. When it comes to the house of God, we believe for people to flow into the temple. We believe to, for life to flow out of the temple. New roads, new rivers. In your life, new roads of opportunity. New roads lead to what? They lead to new possibilities, unusual miracles. They lead to new horizons, pioneer again. They lead to places that have never, ever, ever been impacted before. They lead to new heights. It's amazing. In new roads here, I mean, in, in great heights, how you can look out and it's like, wow. You, what you see, you can only stand in awe and be amazed. It is amazing feel for what might be ahead and get a sense of the stand in awe and be amazed. Unbelievable miracle in Jesus' name.